Well, Giorgio Caffiero is the CEO of the Washington-based geopolitical risk consultancy Gulf State Analytics. He joins me now from the US capital. Giorgio, given what we've seen so far, intensifying clashes between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon, US moving ships to the region, but also Egypt playing down an attack or an accidental attack on its forces. How likely do you think at this stage it is that this conflict is going to spread? Well, there's very good reason to be concerned about exactly that. There are so many different players that are interfering in this conflict. Um, it's now, uh, you know, you got three fronts around <clears throat> Israel, Gaza, West Bank, and Lebanon. You have to also consider the role that Iran is playing, the interests that Iran has. Also consider the ways in which Yemen is related to this violence in Israel and Palestine. And I'm very concerned about uh, the conflict spreading. The Israeli officials have made it very clear that they are not going to agree to any ceasefire, certainly not anytime soon. So as this gruesome violence prolongs, the odds of this violence spreading to other parts of the Middle East are only going to increase. And I mentioned there, US has moved a warship. Not only that, it's moved support ships. There's been talk of submarines. How likely do you see a more significant US military involvement in what's going on after a potential ground invasion? Well, I think obviously the US is trying to flex some military muscle, send a very uh, loud and clear message to Hezbollah and by extension, Iran. But let's also keep in mind that there's not really any appetite for a uh, for U.S. involvement in a Middle Eastern war on the part of the U.S. Uh, voters. The Biden administration is, of course, focused on the fact that in about a year from now, we have the next U.S. presidential election. And I think what Biden's team is trying to do is signal that the White House's support for Israel is ironclad. But at the same time, I think officials in the Biden administration are going to be working really hard to try to prevent uh, circumstances from unfolding in a way that would result in U.S. becoming directly, much more directly involved in a conflict in the Middle East, especially if there's not really any sort of clear end game. Again, uh, the Biden team is really uh, focused on the fact that we have an election in one year and the domestic politics of the U.S. will, of course, be influencing the decision making in the White House. And given that tricky line that the White House is trying to tread right now, how is that signaling being taken by Israel's neighbors? Uh, do you think they're going to be paying much attention to it or do you think that given the election coming up, you know, they'll think it's, you know, perhaps more of a message than a real threat? Well, it's a good question. Obviously, you know, uh, every single country in the region has its own perspective on the situation. I don't think that countries in the region, whether they're friendly to the U.S. or not, really doubt how much uh, the U.S. is supporting Israel. This is a bipartisan U.S. foreign policy, really no matter who's in the White House, uh, the U.S. gives unconditional support to Israel. The U.S. might not always like everything Israel is doing, but at the end of the day, the U.S. pretty much always goes to bat for Israel, especially during crises like this one. George, I wanted to talk a little bit about the 212 hostages that are being held by Hamas. Two have been freed so far. Intense diplomacy going on there. There's been a lot of talk about Qatar's role in this. Can you explain that a bit for us and tell me why Qatar is so critical in this? Well, Qatar has long maintained a relationship with Hamas since the exiled leadership of Hamas left Damascus at the beginning of the Arab Spring. It's been based in Qatar, and officials in Doha have often been a diplomatic bridge between Israel and the U.S. on one side and Hamas on the other. In past crises, Qatar has played a very important role in terms of mediating ceasefires. 
uh, between Hamas and Israel. Qatar also plays a very has played a very important role in terms of delivering humanitarian aid to the besieged Gaza Strip, and Qatar is also a very important U.S. ally. I would say probably out of all six GCC states, uh, Qatar is the one that aligns most closely with the United States from a geopolitical standpoint. Um, there are many cases of Doha and Washington working very closely in coordinating their po policies when it comes to regional crises. Uh, the Biden administration has obviously been turning to Doha for a lot of support uh, when it comes to the status of these hostages. As you mentioned on Friday, there were two hostages, both dual U.S. Israeli citizens who were freed, and uh, Doha played a very important role in arranging that. Obviously, the Biden administration wants to get all of the hostages freed, um, and I think we, until that happens, we can expect the Biden administration to continue relying on Doha. I'll finish this with the point, though, that after the hostages are freed, assuming we get to that point, I think it will be interesting to see if the Biden administration tries to put pressure on Doha to expel Hamas leaders as a consequence of the October 7th incursion into southern Israel. The reputation of Hamas has changed in Western capitals, and we might get to a point where the U.S. leadership sees the presence of Hamas in Doha as a little bit more problematic. But again, for right now, the Biden administration is relying on Doha very much as a diplomatic bridge to Hamas. Giorgio Cafiero from Washington, thank you so much for that insight. Thank you.